Welcome, Dr. Fields. I'm so glad that you could join us. I really appreciate your time this morning. Good morning. Yeah, glad to do it. Yeah, yeah. So um, those of you that are online, I just wanted to welcome you. Um, if you don't know already, you are at an Aspen Dental Ask Me Anything. And we mean it. You know, you have the ability to submit questions anonymously. Um, so, you know, fire away. Aspen Dental is the largest branded DSO in the nation. We have over 800 offices nationwide. Um, and we have Dr. Dan Fields joining us here today to answer your questions. And I think we'll start out with you, doctor. If you want to let us know, you know, where you went to dental school um, and, you know, your path through dental school and how you chose Aspen. Okay. Um, went to dental school at uh, University of Tennessee in Memphis. Um, originally was kind of known in college I wanted to go to dental school. Ended up trying to get in, took a year off between school, turned into two years. Um, got into Memphis from uh, from there in uh, 2012 and then um, graduated 2016 and um, started looking for jobs. I don't, how far do you want me to go, Maggie? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. You know, how did you, you know, how did you start looking for a position? Because, you know, a lot of people joining us here today are at that stage. They're either a year away from yeah. making that decision. They're, they're probably being contacted by yeah. recruiters and, and looking at their options. So how was that path for you? Um, I mean, I went to a couple lunch and learns throughout, you know, probably the first two years of school, just mostly for some free food. And then um, Aspen was one of those and kind of liked what they were talking about. They seemed pretty honest, pretty straightforward with everything. Um, you know, you, you come out of dental school with hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. So that was, um, appealing that you could go in straight out day one, you're going to get a paycheck regardless of how much production you can do. Um, that was always kind of uh, nerve wracking trying to worry about, am I going to have to find my own patients? Am I going to have to, you know, really sell myself or sell my skills? But um, with Aspen, there's a little bit more comfort that I could get in, kind of slowly get my, um, get my speed up, get my feet wet, so to speak. Um, while still getting a paycheck and paying off loans at that point. Um, and then also with Aspen, um, at the time, I think they had, they were, you know, saying 550, 600 offices, and that's grown in the last four years for sure to over 800 kind of nationwide. So that was appealing as well. You know, I was from Arkansas, I went to school in Tennessee, knew I didn't want to go back to Arkansas straight out of the gate. Um, so that was appealing to be like, well, I could try somewhere else. Um, I could move to kind of anywhere, work for Aspen. If I don't like this, you know, uh, like Aspen, I can still move within the company to a different city or they've always got um, ownership, partnership opportunities kind of popping up nationwide that you could kind of play around with where you want to live for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. So that was, that was a nice aspect as well. Yeah. Um, so you landed, you know, where you are, you, um, can you tell me about the mentorship that you received, you know, um, just from, from the owner doc and, yeah. and how that played out and how, how you, you know, that interview process, um, took place and, you know, obviously chemistry comes into play. <laughs> if you can speak a little bit about that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I'd originally was thinking I wanted to live in kind of Nashville, Tennessee, um, and was talking to a buddy of mine in my dental class. His wife started working for Aspen in, I want to say 2015, 2014. So um, talking with them, kind of talking about options in my third and early fourth year, um, she just said, hey, I've got some new offices that I'm kind of looking at buying. Would you want to work for me in Chattanooga? Um, I'm like, well, okay, I don't have any ties really anywhere. So yeah, sure. Sounds good. A job's a job. Um, so then that really helped me. I kind of knew them ahead of time. Um, mm -hmm. but you know, the partnership option or the, just the mentorship option was, um, 
appealing. You know, she's been working for, uh, I think, four or five years at the time. Um, she obviously knows what she's doing. She had bought, when we graduated, two or three offices. So, um, you know, it was working really well for her. Um, and then so straight out in the summer after graduation, started working for her as kind of a mentor doc uh, with potential as, you know, eventually being kind of the MCD or the, the managing doctor in that office. Um, having somebody in the office with you um, is great because you get out of school, you think you know everything, and then you quickly learn there's different or better or easier techniques to stuff um, that you, you kind of have to learn. Um, if you're not with somebody, you have to kind of just trial and error, but having somebody there with you kind of almost side by side or um, someone that you can bounce ideas off of it, as you're kind of figuring stuff out um, was very beneficial. Um, having her, Dr. Bowling there, um, you know, if anything, it was just a safety net. And, right. um, you know, starting out as a fresh, dentist um, takes a little bit of the pressure off of having to produce or, or uh, you know seem as smart as you know you are kind of thing I don't know yeah no I, I we always hear from you know graduating dentists that um, you know it's that confidence you know they need to build up their confidence yeah and yeah. you know did you feel that that's really what Dr. Bowling you know gave you delivered yeah yeah for sure um, you know, you, you, you come out, like I said earlier, you, you know what you're doing, but just being confident in yourself, kind of like what you're saying, is, is a hard thing to, to learn in school because um, you've got other professors there kind of doing it with you. Um, so then again, it's just as you get out into the real world, having Dr. Bowling there um, or having that mentor doctor there um, kind of helps bolster your confidence pretty quickly too I mean within six months I feel like you you know you kind of okay I'm, I'm picking up I'm, I'm getting the flow I can I can handle you know running multiple chairs or you know doing fillings in one room and then going and checking on hygiene in another room without kind of freaking out because you've only got an hour to do do all right. this whereas in school you had you know four hours to do the same amount so right well we've got some questions coming in um how long did it take you to become an owner? So you're a partner owner. Yep, partner owner, um, I, right at two years. Um, so again, with Dr. Bowling, we kind of set out from the beginning, this is something I'm interested in. Um, she was very open, you know, like, okay, these are the X, Y, and Z that we want you to be able to do. We want to kind of, you know, see that you can run an office on your own, um, that you can be a producer that you can drive the business, so to speak. Um, so we started talking probably about that year and a half mark um, about partnership options. And then um, an opportunity opened up in one of her offices in North Georgia um, that, I, you know, she needed a doctor to cover the office. I was looking at wanting to partner. And so it just kind of the, the pieces fell together at that point. But um, it ended up being kind of right at that two years. You know, I'd ran um, one of her Chattanooga offices on my own for about a year at that point. Um, we were yeah. doing pretty well managing managing all that. And so just kind of moved up from there. Oh, that's awesome. You really yeah. proved yourself and sounds like a smooth transition. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so right now, the office that you're in, do you see your partner much? Does, does Dr. Bowling come in much? Not, not usually. I mean, she'll come in probably monthly um, mm -hmm. just to check in on things, um, mostly doing kind of morale boost stuff with the staff, um, kind of some FaceTime stuff with them, um, you know, buying lunch or doing a little kind of fun something for them just to kind of mm -hmm. say that she appreciates them and that she's there for them kind of thing. And then just checking in on the on the me and the office manager, kind of seeing how we're doing, making sure we're doing okay. And I mean, she's always you know a phone call away if I need her. But um, and, you know, as long as nothing's going wrong, she's right. kind of lets us do her own thing, for, so to yeah, speak. Yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> nice. Um, it's really your office, you know. Um, yeah. That's yeah. great. Yeah. 
So you have how many doctors, how many dentists are in your office? In mine, just me. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. I'm looking for an associate if someone wants to work in the Chattanooga area. That'd be great. <laughs> okay. Good, good, good. And how many operatories does your office have? Um, seven. Okay. Yeah, with one, one hygienist. One hygienist. Mm -hmm. One dental assistant. Uh, we've got four. Um, it's pretty busy. Okay. Uh, we are a fairly heavy denture, um, denture office. Um, so, I mean, we do a lot of extractions, a lot of dentures and partials. Um, we do a lot of crown and bridge or probably more crowns. And then, um, in the last year and a half or so I've gotten into implants, which has been a really fun, just kind of different, yeah. different avenue of, of production. So that, that actually is a good lead in. So the implant training that you had, mm -hmm. can you talk a little bit about that? What, what Aspen provided yeah. you with? Yeah. Um, so I guess the big thing would be um, just with Aspen in general, as big of a brand as it is, you get some discounts on stuff, which is really nice. So with that, you get some discounts on some CE. Um, so I was able to take a, an implant course um, about two summers ago um, that was considerably cheaper than what I would have pricing out in just the, you know, private practice, general practice world. Um, but it was a two week course. Uh, we did a week in a classroom. Um, we went out to uh, California, went to uh, Nobel's, uh, Nobel Biocare's like home office, I guess, for some um, on-site training with the implants, um, practice placing them on some uh, kind of fake mandibles and bone and stuff like that. Um, and then we did a week in Colorado at a, um, kind of a partner practice that does a lot of implants. They were able to get patients for us to actually place them and then um, do some kind of live training at that point for that week. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. great. Does does your office provide, um, do you have Invisalign in your office? We do. Mm -hmm. We just started that about a year and a half ago, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. December of, was that 20, 2019, 2018? Yeah. Um, okay. And that's been really fun. It's been something that I never really thought I'd get into this quickly. But, um, you know, we had started talking about doing that um, the fall of that year. And then Aspen provided some training in um, Nashville, kind of as a state territory. We went over there, all the dentists and hygienists and office managers from Tennessee um, for about two days of live training there, um, working on some digital scanning as well as the Invisalign kind of uh, boot camp, so to speak. Mm -hmm. um, crash course and so that was really fun um, but then also bringing that back to your practice um, you know now we are able to treat kind of anything and everything in the office that we want to um, you know from the Invisalign to dentures to implants kind of the whole whole mouth treatment at that point um, that's been really good too um, we've got these digital scanners um, that we're able to kind of Intro oral, take pictures of people's mouths, kind of show them this is your occlusion, this is where you're hitting really hard, this is where you've broken a tooth, and this is why you broke the tooth. So it's a lot, um, a lot of help for patient education, um, as well as you know, with that we can be like, hey, like, this is how we fix this. This is what we're gonna do. This is how we can move these teeth around. This is what we need to do for crowns or fillings, um, and straightening up and, and getting them into happier, better smiles. Yeah, and that's huge, right? The the iTero scanner that yeah. we have in every office, and and what that does to your treatment planning. You know, mm -hmm. um, I'm an Aspen patient, so I've experienced it firsthand. I've been an Aspen patient before I was a part of Aspen Nation. So, um, you know, just ha all of the state of the art equipment um, that you know Aspen has in each of their mm -hmm. offices. Did that play into your decision to join Aspen at all? Um, it definitely helped um, kind of sweeten the pot. Um, you know, you, you hear horror stories of going into a private practice that's still using um, digital or uh, film x-rays and mm -hmm. they're having to go into a dark room to develop them and, and stuff like that. But um, that's, you know, 
at this part or at this time in the world, pretty archaic. Uh, Aspen definitely has kind of cut, cutting edge technology, you know, obviously digital um, x-rays, but I mean, as well as we're doing uh, cone beam uh, CTs in our, in my office um, just to help for implant placement or, or nerve tracking for, um, you know, oral surgeons in the area or whatever, um, as well as the intraoral scanners that you're able to kind of, like you were saying, help with treatment planning, helping show diagnosis, diagnosing stuff with the patients they can kind of they can see a big black hole or a big black spot on their tooth they know that that means it's probably going to need a filling or something worse so then it's easier to say here's how we fix this and, and then get right. them started right and somebody has a question here you know will i do my own treatment planning so for a new associate de dentist mm -hmm. coming in mm -hmm. to aspen you know will they do their own treatment planning yeah um pretty pretty much from from ground one or ground zero you're going to be doing your own own treatment planning and then I mean you'll be working off of your kind of mentor or your um, managing doctors for a little bit as you're kind of learning how to do the, do things and um, but you know you can you can definitely day one do a treatment plan and then start on that patient that afternoon if you if you really wanted to if a patient was up for it um, and then a lot of it you know I'm pretty flexible I, I like I treatment plan pretty aggressively sometimes as far as, you know, let's get these cavities taken care of that kind of thing. But, um, you know, it's not going to hurt my feelings if you're like, Hey, let's do this instead of that. Okay, cool. As long as that makes sense. Like it's best for the patient. It's, it's good. To, good to go. What's best for the patient. Right. Um, so as far as your new patient counts, um, that's another thing, you know, Aspen, um, does an amazing job with, with marketing and, getting the word out there. So how many, on average, how many new patients a day or a week does your office see? Um, so we average about eight new patients a day. Um, so that would be eight full exams for the most part. Um, you know, it gets pretty busy sometimes, you know, it's an average. So sometimes you'll have 12 to 15 and sometimes you'll have three that show up to just kind of hit or miss, but uh, you just kind of roll with it and, and hope you, uh, you aren't stuck in a production procedure for three hours or something, but right. uh, generally, uh, you know, about a, a new patient exam per hour. Um, the majority of that time, honestly, is uh, with the dental assistant taking x-rays, doing the digital scanning, um, that dental health scan. And then um, from there, you know, they'll see the hygienist as well. So um, they'll get a perio treatment plan um, same time and then the doc will come in and, and actually talk about um, restorative work or you know replacing teeth that kind of thing and then from there they can they can go straight up front to your office manager or treatment coordinator that's going to handle all the financials um, so you know I really am probably with the patient um, 10 to 10 minutes or so probably on average um, and the majority of that is just patient education kind of explaining what's going on um, explaining what we're going to do. And then from there, kind of handing that off to your office manager uh, so that they can, they can get them up front. Here's what it's going to cost and here's how we're going to pay for it so we can get you fixed. Right. And the office manager plays a huge part in, yeah. in the operation of the, the practice. So, sure. um, you know, maybe you can touch on, you know, Aspen does take so many insurances and then mm -hmm. for folks that don't have insurance um you know what are their options um so yeah i the office manager like i said is pretty key in that um i know nothing about insurance um you know you go to dental school to learn about fillings and crowns and, and extractions not how to code for dental uh for insurance um okay. so it's great to have down there you know your your i call them my uh, insurance wizards in the office that they can kind of figure this out, break it down for the patients, um, that if they have it, great. And then if not, you know, we have um, multiple financing options that they can talk the patients through um, as far as uh, kind of a monthly payment plan, so to speak, to get the, uh, get the patients the treatment that they need. Mm -hmm. um, and they're, again, kind of the experts in that as well. Um, I want to, there's two lenders that they typically use, um, and then uh, they'll kind of work through the application process with the patients up front and then, you know, get them approved for, for their treatment and then get them hopefully back that same day to go ahead and start something, whether it's impressions for, you know, dentures or partials or um, get them in hygiene for their period treatment. Right. 
Well, we have a new question that just came in that kind of bounces okay. off of this. Are Aspen Dental Offices strictly PPO offices or do they accept state insurance plans also? Um, that's, I guess, up to the owner doctor or the doctor that's running the office and what they want to take. Um, we are definitely on some DHMO plans, um, but a lot of the state insurances, it's kind of just up to you as the doctor in the office. If you want to see them, you can. I, I typically don't. Um, it's, it's usually, um, it's harder to get those patients started. And then, and there a lot of times, um, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't, okay. we don't, we don't see so we a don't, lot. We don't of, participate. We don't participate yeah. in Medicaid and Medicare. Correct. Um, For the, yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, um, but then that's, you know, part of, uh, you know, taking so many insurances and then offering the extra financing options. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to say a lot of our care. Yeah. A lot of our state insurance people that come in for the exam um, in Georgia, it's a free exam. So we get a lot of people coming in. I just want to see what's going on. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll kind of tell them this is what's up. And then they've got, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, and we can, we can, we kind of know what those cover. So we could say that, well, typically they'll cover this amount and Aspen's great that they're able, you're able to coupon or discount treatment to try and get you a little more competitive with stuff like that. If they're, someone that you, you know, are really wanting to work with, there, there are options uh, for you as a doctor or for your office manager to kind of jump through some different hoops to help get it more affordable for the patients outside of their Medicaid or Medicare plans. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we don't want to turn them away if they really are adamant that they want to just use your insurance. Okay. But we can maybe make this a little more affordable and still get you fixed. Right. And, and get them the care that they need. It's always, it's always about patient care. So yeah. you touched on, you know, dentures for your office and that you do a lot of them. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question here. I heard every Aspen practice has a dental denture lab right within their office. They do. And it's fantastic. <laughs> um, I don't have to <laughs> set up teeth anymore. I don't have to make a wax bite for people. Um, that was also, also starting out fantastic um, there's a lot of stuff that your lab technician in the office um, has seen or will know how to do if you're having questions on hey this is a funky bite can we make it work um, or you know how do we do this or that to get a better impression um, they've uh, most of the time um, have been in the office for several years or been a lab tech for several years um, so that was also a, a very um, helpful kind of crutch at the beginning to use someone else just another person to kind of what are some tips and tricks on on mm -hmm. doing this better right and they're always there they're yeah. right there um yeah. so you don't have to wait to collaborate or and isn't that an art i mean that yeah. our lab techs are yeah. amazing yeah yeah, yeah. i hated really setting teeth up in, in dental school and it's it's amazing how quickly they can do it compared to what I was doing back then. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's neat. So we have a question. Do you order your own supplies? Um, yes. Like, are you able to choose what, what you what you want in your office? Yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um, there's a requisition system, an ordering system through Aspen that you, for, for the most part, use um, that's got pretty much everything in there um, and then again with kind of your Aspen brand name you can get some some nice discounts on some of that um, to help with kind of your overhead but um, yeah you can order whatever if there's something that's not on there I've had to order a couple special implant parts for dentures over the years that we've had to go outside the rec system um, and you know at that point it just comes out of the kind of out of your office right. uh, paycheck or whatever um, but yeah, you can definitely order that. There's different brands. If you like, you know, this brand versus that brand, there's different options there and, and mm -hmm. kind of trial and error until you find something you like. Right. So then this question came in, do your hygienists get to order their own supplies as well? Do they have yeah. a choice? Yeah, there's three different ordering systems. You've got your dental 
ordering, your hygiene ordering, and your lab tech ordering. So, I mean, um, typically I've got a, a dental assistant that's taking care of ours. Um, so she knows what I like, knows what we use. So she'll just kind of order that every two weeks to get kind of back up to stock. And then the hygienist is handling their own um, ordering outside of, of your dental order. Um, so they're ordering, you know, their piezo scalers, their profi cups, profi angles, um, you know, floss, all that stuff on their own. And again, they can kind of manage that. That's kind of part of their business. You want them to kind of drive their own business as well. So they're um, hopefully being productive um, and then ordering the right stuff for their patients as well. Oh, that's nice. That's nice to have freedom, mm -hmm. you know, and, and to be able to be comfortable with what they want to work with and have sure. on hand. Yeah. Um, so was your office closed during the onset of COVID? Um, yes, we closed kind of mid to late March and we're closed for about six weeks, opened up kind of the last week of April. Um, so that was kind of hard. Um, I, we tried in the Chattanooga area to keep at least an office open for emergency patients um, that we could kind of funnel all four of the offices in this area to that one office for, you know, if people are needing same day extractions or they're hurting, like, let's see what's going on. Just because at that point, really everyone had shut down, um, yeah. private practice and uh, large group stuff. So um, we got a lot of patients that way for about a week or two, but then those even kind of, kind of um, trickled off and we ended up shutting completely down for probably four weeks. So most of April at that point. Yeah, a lot of patients going without care, so. Then when you did open, um, quite busy? Were you busy initially? It, it was a very quick ramp up to busy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, that last week of April was pretty slow. You know, we, again, we're trying to be cautious of not, or and protective not only of the patients, but of our staff. Um, no one wants to get, you know, coronavirus. So we, mm -hmm. um, kind of slow goings at the beginning, but then, you know, within a couple of weeks, especially once we were able to get a handle on um, extra PPE and, and, you know, higher level masks and gowns and such, uh, we were able to kind of pick up. And then, like you said, a lot of people were without treatment for so long, they were, they were ready to get in and get started, yeah. um, which honestly kind of surprising for as, as many people as, um, as we've seen in the last really two months, I guess, since then, um, a lot of it's been new patients that we've gotten started. We, you know, we had an old call list of, of existing patients we're trying to kind of siphon back through, mm -hmm. but a lot of it has been new people coming in with, you know, new problems that have popped up in the, you know, month and a half of uh, the Corona shutdown. Yeah, I was at, I was at my dental office, my Aspen dental office yesterday for a cleaning and the hygienist had said that um, a lot of their new patients were coming in because their private practice hasn't decided to open yet. So, yeah. you know, Aspen has become an option for them. Yeah. And, um, we've been able to provide the care that they need. Yeah. So, you know, kind of to piggyback off of that, because of COVID, we started the Smile Wide, Smile Safe program. Um, we've got, you know, deep cleaning going on in the offices. Um, tell me a little bit about how things have changed just as far as, you know, how patients come in and, you know, how you're pacing people and also just the, um, you know, the, the cleaning that goes on and also the PPE. Do you feel mm -hmm. that you have enough PPE to, to you know, operate? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I guess from the beginning, uh, from the get-go, you're, you're kind of limiting number of people in the office um we're for the most part you know keeping people outside of the office especially extra people that aren't patients that day um and then we've got a um kind of they'll come in check in with the front desk give them a mask if they don't have one already and then either tell them you know we'll get them back immediately um, if the room's available or if the room's not you know kind of go wait out in your car if you can, and we'll call you when we're, when we're ready. Um, and for the most part, people have been pretty receptive, pretty understanding. Um, <clears throat> you know, we try, and, <clears throat> excuse me, try and call ahead of time as well when we're, you know, day before calling people say, Hey, we'll see you tomorrow. 
um, tell them to not bring someone extra just because they're not going to be able to in, get in the, in the building for the, for the most part. Um, so then once, you know, uh, PPE, we, it very quickly, um, Aspen was able to get a bunch of people of uh, the extra protection and the N95 masks out to the offices, um, a bunch of extra hand sanitizer for everybody, for the front, for the new patients coming in, for the back, for uh, as we're cleaning up, as well as, um, you know, sanitizers and sprays and wipes and all that to clean the rooms down between patients. So, um, you know, we've kind of slowed down or stretched out some appointments instead of it taking, you know, an hour for a couple of fillings, we might do an hour and a half just to give you time to um, kind of clean between production patients. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the beginning, we were trying to limit kind of aerosol procedures. So anything that's spraying water in the air, uh, um, trying to keep that down to a minimum. But now that we've kind of got a handle on it, we're kind of closing off the room, doing the procedure, and then wiping everything down in the room that you can reach with your hands, you know, <laughs> um, up the cabinets, up the walls, all that, just to kind of get all this cleaned up as, as best as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we've so got, you have uh, monthly, monthly deliveries of PPE, is that correct? Yeah, um, monthly of the extra stuff. And then also in your dental ordering, you can order if, you know, if we're running out of gowns or, you know, face shields or whatever, you can order those extra. Um, and then now we've just started where, um, we the through Aspen through our um, we have a laundry service that takes care of a lot of the um, the you know we've got extra um, gowns that they can take out, take away and wash for us um, and then you know anything that's going to get touched by the patients um, right. jackets lab jackets that kind of stuff or um, uh, we've got blankets and, and things too that kind of handy. Mm -hmm. We've got another question that just came in. How many days a week is your office open? Every day, all day. Um, <laughs> no, it's uh, it's five business days, and typically you'll do a Saturday a month, um, especially in the busier months, kind of um, early spring. Everybody's insurance is rolled over. Let's do some Saturdays through you know February, March, April, and into May for sure. Um, summer months when it kind of slows off, I. I try and not do a Saturday if I can, just cause I'm in there by myself. So it gets a little tiring, but, um, as far as hours, you know, you're, we're there a lot, but, um, you know, it's, it's, it's rewarding, you know, whether you're helping patients or, um, you know, you're able to kind of get some stuff done that way. Um, typically we'll, we have a late day. That's kind of our one big thing to help people that are working kind of a more nine to five job. Um, so we'll do a nine to seven or a 10 to seven once a week. Um, and then the rest of the time, it's kind of normal business hours, um, eight to five thirty or six. And then um, I do a half day on Fridays. So I work till one and then cut out for the good. weekend. Good, good. Um, those Fridays fly by too. One yeah. o'clock comes quick. It I does. Do. It's it's kind of hard. It's before you know it, you're done. It's like, oh, it's okay. I guess it's one. Yeah. Let's leave. <laughs> right. Well, this yeah. is a great question. I actually haven't heard this one before. Um, if you're the only doc in the office, who covers for you when you're on vacation? Um, the owner, the, my partner doctor typically does. Um, so she'll cover for me when I'm out on vacation. Just got to give her some notice and she'll, she'll come in and work. Um, otherwise, um, I'm taking a vacation at the end of September that she's having a baby pretty quickly after that. So she didn't want to work the full week. So, um, I was able to talk with, um, another office in Georgia, um, another Aspen office in Georgia, and they have an associate that they're going to lend us for a couple of days to kind of fill in the other half. Nice. Um, so that's really nice too. You've got kind of your network of Aspen people that you can talk through and talk with, um, kind of reach out to if you need help. Um, especially like biggest thing is dental assistants calling out sick is is hard so you know it, most of the offices in my area are 15 minutes away from each other um so hey like so and so's out sick can we get some help today we've got a lot going on or, or whatever and, and usually you know assuming they can do it they're going to send somebody um, to kind of cover that, oh, that that's slack. great yeah mm -hmm. that's great such a team so yeah. is your vacation time paid time off 
It is. Um, I think as a doctor, you start out with two weeks paid vacation mm-hmm. um, after working for like 90 days or something like that. But yeah, it's paid vacation. Um, <clears throat> and then anything after that's kind of up to the managing doctor, owner, doctor's discretion. But, mm-hmm. you know, two full weeks and then I think you get three or two or three, you know, sick days, so to speak. Yeah, I can speak to that. So the two weeks vacation is actually 10 vacation days. So 10 paid vacation days. And then there's six paid holidays. And then Aspen also provides three paid personal days. So some people call those sick days. Yeah. So that's, that's the paid time off benefit. And nobody's asked this question yet. But of course, as you know, doctor, you know, great health insurance, dental insurance, vision, um, you're able to um, participate in our 401k after a year. Um, mm-hmm. And if anybody wants any details on that, I can, I can help you out with that. Um, so yeah, the benefits are amazing. Yeah. Um, is there anything that Aspen, you know, asks you to do that you don't want to do or don't agree with? Um. No. Um, and if they ask me to do it and I don't agree with it and I say, here's why they're pretty understanding of, okay, that makes sense. Or, okay, let's, let's tweak this and try and do something kind of meet in the middle. Um, yeah. you know, I've, I've never had Aspen, um, try and dictate treatment on what needs to be done or how many crowns or, or how many extractions I need to do in a month. Um, they're going to leave that up to me. They, they you know, you're, me as a doc, I'm trained in, in dentistry. So they, they trust me to do that. And they know, know what I'm, uh, they know that I know what I'm doing. Um, but the biggest thing would really just be, Hey, let's try and tweak your patient flow to either see an extra new patient a day, try and do one more procedure a day or, or, or that kind of thing. Um, but if I give them pushback or, or say like, I don't really feel comfortable doing that. Can we do this instead? usually pretty understanding to say, okay, that makes sense too. Like, let's try that and see how it goes. So Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. very, very understanding, very uh, beneficial on both sides, I think, in that regard. Good, good. Are you offered um, CE is the other question that I just got in. Yeah, Um, there's a lot of online CE that's done through Aspen's bridge, kind of their in-office internet, I guess, um, Mm -hmm. for free. Um, so you can do a lot of that just online kind of right there at your office computer. Um, and then they also offer just random CE courses throughout the years. This year is probably a little different, but, um, where we kind of meet up in in a spot, like I said, for that Invisalign, um, where we all kind of met up in Nashville, that was CE credit that the doctors got when we were there for that. So, um, and that was free to me. It was, I think, paid out of by the offices, but, or by the owner, but I mean, it was pretty cheap comparatively. And then, like you said, or like I said, you can start doing Invisalign at that point for, for really minimal dollars out of your own pocket. Yeah. A lot of patient satisfaction with Invisalign too. Yeah. Yeah. It's life-changing mm-hmm. as our dentures, obviously. Yeah. Um, we have a new question that just came in. Are there office production quotas placed on you from the corporate level? Um, no, there's a budget. Um, and I say that very loosely, it's more of a target. Here's what we want to do in the month so that we can cover all of our expenses, um, so that the office can be productive. Um, but you know, if you have a bad month and no new patients come in and nobody's wanting to get started, okay, it happens, you know, you can't control everything. Um, but just kind of make the most of what you've got when you have it. <clears throat> um, so, you know, we'll have a, a budget that you'll, it's pretty fair. It's pretty average on based on your kind of rolling last year's 12 months. Um, here's what you've done in, in the previous, here's what we expect. Here's what you think you can do kind of moving forward. Um, as mostly, like I said, just a, a goal or a target for your office to hit each month. Mm-hmm. So one of the things um, we have, for those of you that don't know, it is a a call center in Phoenix, Arizona. So all the new patient calls get routed through um, the call center. There is a way to contact your exact office, right, doctor? 
So you've yeah. got maybe, you know, established patients or someone that has an appointment coming up. So mm -hmm. they are able to speak with your office individually, but yeah. um, all the new patient calls are routed through the call center. And then those are, you know, obviously scheduled through that. So when you start your day, do you, you know, is that something that you're looking at right away? Like how many new patient appointments you have already set up? Um, yeah, either beginning of the day or maybe the end of the previous day, kind of check in tomorrow's schedule, that kind of thing. Um, and for the most part, the call center, like you're talking about, is great at filling that up. Um, you've got kind of one full schedule of, you know, here's the eight hours, here's your hour long exam. So here's your eight new patient exams, but you've also got this, Kind of extra chair of a high needs chair that's kind of people that have called within 24 hours saying they have tooth pain and want to get in kind of get that fixed so you end up with a couple extras on the side so um, you know you may start out with 11 or 12 scheduled exams but um, you know most of those probably show up probably 80 90 percent hopefully and then um, kind of from there uh, you can add in people walk in or like you said, if they actually call the office specifically, try and get them in a little bit sooner than, Hey, I've got an appointment in a week, but I'm hurting now. Can you move me up? Okay. Yeah. I had somebody no show. Let's, let's get you in right now. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, and then also kind of with that, if you have people or you're looking ahead at the schedule and it's empty, um, you or probably maybe your office manager more specifically can actually call the call center and they can put a highlight on your office hey, we were really light on new patients this week. Can you, you know, funnel us some new patients to see? And they'll, they'll definitely do that and kind of overload you sometimes. But it's really helpful just so you don't sit around and twiddle on your thumbs and then, you know, you can get some people seen and fixed up. Wow. It does, doesn't sound like there's ever a dull moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, your weeks must fly by. Um, why did you choose dentistry? You, you know, we were speaking earlier, there's definitely um, – your dad's a physician. Mm -hmm. um, what led you to dentistry? Um, yeah, my dad is a physician. Um, I saw him growing up, um, always kind of gone or on call, nights and weekends stuff. Um, dentistry to me uh, seemed like a, a little bit more family friendly um, field to still be able to help people, still be able to um, kind of fix fix people up um, without having to stress about being overnight stays in the hospital or um, I'm gone on the weekend because I, and I can't, you know, go to my kids basketball games or, or whatever that is. Um, my uncle was also an oral surgeon. So he definitely probably played a big role in that kind of pushing me towards dentistry instead of uh, medical. Uh, but definitely um, thank him for that just because it is a, it's a really good field. You're able to kind of instantly, see changes in people um, like you were saying earlier uh, Maggie with dentures or Invisalign like it's it's almost night and day that the changes yeah. you can you can witness um, you know most of the Invisalign cases that I'm doing are pretty quick six to eight months but I mean some of the the occlusion the the crowding that they've got it, it's it's crazy that they've lived you know 30 years like this and they're just now getting right. that taken care of and then same thing with dentures you know you, you've got all these broken teeth and take them out patients super appreciative you give them a denture and then i mean the next day they're coming in smiling and it's like you just had 20 teeth taken out are you sure <laughs> and they're they're rocking and rolling and ready to go they, they love it it's great yeah and how many tears are shed right yeah, there's just a lot of emotion around yeah. that it's life-changing so a new question came in do you have specialists like you're speaking about oral surgery do you have specialists or do yeah. you refer out um, y yes and no. So we have an oral surgeon that kind of comes around once a month or so. Um, and so that you can send heart extraction cases, people that are adamant, they want to go to sleep to get stuff done. Um, wisdom teeth that I just don't want to mess with that kind of thing. Um, to those guys, um, other than that, you've, I think some offices do have kind of a traveling endodontist that would come around and do some root canals. Um, we do not in my area, so I end up sending out to just private practice and Adonis that um, I've kind of worked with since I got out, and they, they do good work, and we like them, and mm -hmm. patients seem to like them okay, too. Did you build that relationship with that specialist on your own? Um, I mean, your owner doc? 
owner doctor probably um, kind of st- definitely set the groundwork. And then now, I mean, at this point, they probably recognize me more than her just because I'm working more. Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, it's it's something that you kind of build over the years. And she kind of started that out before I got there. And then it's just kind of grown from there. Yeah. For those of you that are listening, we do um, in other parts of the country, not in Dr. Fields area, but we do have oral surgeons and endodontists that typically travel, um, you know, throughout four or six offices. Um, and so if there are, you know, are any specialists listening, um, <laughs> it's definitely a career path within Aspen. Um, it's, it's very, you have a lot of autonomy and, um, you know, it, it's a great position within our, our family. So mm-hmm. um, is there anything else you want to add, Dr. Fields, just about maybe, you know, When you wake, I got one for you. When you wake up in the morning and you're, you know, excited to go in for the day, what's, what's your favorite part about your team in your office? Mm. Um, Really the kind of atmosphere, I guess, is is more the, the appeal than anything. Um, They're all super fun. I've got a fantastic office manager that really brings some energy to the office um working with her for the last four years she's been able we've been able to hire a really good staff that kind of on that same level of of energy and pep and and spunk that you know that translates into uh better patient relationships because they can see that hey like they're having fun let's let's stick around let's get this done um you know it really it's the little things that um, you don't think matter, but, you know, um, having a fun little huddle in the morning to get the day going, kind of get everybody woken up, um, ends up playing into a better day throughout the day because uh, we're ready to go. We're, we're charged and re-energized. And, and then, like I said, patients can see that in your office. Um, so, you know, she, my office manager, again, she's fantastic. She'll do kind of spirit weeks every now and then we just did a Christmas in July uh, last month. So um, my hygienist decorated the entire office in Christmas, got up the Christmas tree, oh, that's wore, fun. Like, Christmas pajamas or sweaters and um, hats and stuff. And, you know, it's a little hot here in the South in, in July, but um, once you get in and, and just again, the energy and the, the fun atmosphere, the vibes are, are payoff. Yeah. So I, I'm just going to, I feel you made the right decision to join Aspen. Yeah. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Well, Dr. Fields, I really, really appreciate you joining us today. Um, it, I hope you have a wonderful weekend. And thank you, everyone, for, for being on this live session. And talk to you soon. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Doc. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.